Library Library is not only an out-of-date atmosphere for students to work and study in, it was originally meant to look like a hotel lobby. This absurdity is perhaps the many reasons why students find Library Library an unsuitable environment to work efficiently and without it seeming like social hour. With computers scattered throughout tables and tables mindlessly placed, students seem to only be able to use the third floor for the quietest workspace. The main floor of the library is perhaps the biggest problem. Tables are placed closely together, giving students more opportunity to socialize and stem away from the work, causing a distraction to others. A main assembly of computers in the middle of the floor seems to the first time viewers to be the only means of technology on the floor, yet several other computers are oddly hidden around the perimeter. As we can see here, the main floor is also a place for nap time. Home to many computers, the library seems to be suitable to sleep whenever you please. The presence of students taking naps only demonstrates how students do not use the library with the seriousness other libraries are typically used for, studying. Perhaps this coincides with the setup of the furniture. Here we can see a circle of chairs centered together, almost welcoming students to sit around and gossip and talk while other students may actually be taking the library seriously. These four chairs are centered on the main floor and ironically right next to several tables that are placed for students to do work. Yet how exactly should students be able to concentrate when others are socializing? The third floor of the library, the quiet floor, is surrounded by rows and rows and rows of books. Students are hidden at tables all over the floor, next to windows, in between bookshelves, and tucked away in student study rooms. The rules of this floor are no talking, no cell phones. Aren't those, those the rules of any library? Yet only on the third floor do people seem to respect the stereotypical rules of libraries. These three tables seem to be the most popular place students want to use on the third floor. Though tables wider and larger than usual, students can spread their supplies out and not feel confined. Compared to other tables on this floor, students are rather on top of each other with usually three to four tables packed together in small nooks along the walls of the third floor, yet again increasing the chances for socializing. Here you go. You're absolutely boring and uninvited and confined study room. Of course, you would want to face the wall, right? Most likely not. However, with only room for one student, literally, these study rooms outnumber the group study rooms. The red carpet and cream boring walls show just exactly how old this library is and completely dates it. Well, isn't this useful? An office taking over a group study room, lessening the space students have to go for quiet even more. With a large number of study rooms and only a few group study rooms, students struggle to find quiet places to go with another student to find work to do work or study. There are several library offices downstairs in the back. This office should be moved there as well. A more up-to-date design would account for the library and offices in central area. And ah, the Educational Curriculum Center. While this space seems significantly beneficial for education students, it does take the place of a large area where additional tables for studying or additional classrooms could be added or even an additional tutoring area, which students of Fisher have indicated in recent surveys they would like to see within the library. The one and only computer lab in the entire library, and more than likely this lab is signed out for a class. Students have to then resort to hoping a laptop is not signed out or traveling to other parts of campus to try and find an open computer. If professors feel the need for class to be in the library, perhaps the best idea is to use the classrooms and the laptops within the library classrooms, not taking up the space for hours. Welcome to the University of Rochester's Gleason Center, one of the most up-to-date and advanced centers where students are able to study, conduct research, and meet with groups all outside of an actual library. In other words, students are not spaced in and out of bookshelves, but rather in open areas with natural sunlight. Walking up the stairs to the Gleason Center, one can notice the openness and modern day design of the center. With a few computers noted in this picture, students are still separated from those taking advantage of the group workspaces or students relaxing and studying on the cool looking couches. Even up to date and modern furniture gives a yet more welcoming feel to the entire center. This is a model of computers aligned next to each other, yet instead of a, in a quad-like setting, and are, are in a long row with larger space in between each computer. Students are not on top of other students sitting at the table. Students bring their own laptops to these spaces, which allow not as many students to be gathered together at one time and lessen the chances students will take up space to check Facebook and Twitter. This picture shows the area in which students gather for group work. With different shaped tables, this gives the center an appealing look and makes it more inviting than an area with a symmetrical look. Students have the benefit of sitting near large windows, which lets in natural sunlight and will prevent students from feeling in the dark and then getting lazy from no natural feel of the day. This picture is the entranceway to the quieter. Simply blocked off by glass doors, students are widely separated from each other, constituting a quiet environment. There is an area against the wall which students can use not to be 
constructed or even comfortable chairs for students to be more relaxed while studying. Still, there are large windows keeping the students awake and letting in natural sunlight. This is the main computer space in Nazareth Library. Computers are in groups of four with a large space in between them. There's a large area similar to the entire first floor of Larvae Library, solely filled with computer workspaces. Students are then not on top of one another, but still having the access to a computer. Similar to Fisher's third floor, rows of books do flood the floor here. However, the difference is that the shelves of books are placed along the ends of the room so that students are not found behind or in between bookshelves. There are some areas where students can find a quiet table at the end of these shelves to do their own individual study. As you can see, Naz's library still offers the idea of quiet studying. There is a wide open area there's a wide open area available for students to study, but the difference is there are no computers available around this area, so students will not gather to just browse the web. The tables are similar in size to those of Fisher's, yet they are not in one area, and, and perhaps this may offer our side, perhaps this may offer our side effect if students are doing group work. Yet this was intended to be limited with the outside area for group work or the computer. This area, an open and bright area surrounded by large windows, is a beautiful and natural, relaxing area for students to do work. Unlike Fisher's Library, where you seem to be constantly surrounded by four walls and no windows, this area provides an area for group work or individual studying. There's no, also a cafe right outside. While it is obvious that the outside library library is beautiful and the new design is exquisite, it does not compensate for the inside and out-of-day library. Physical appearance is important and good, but also misleading. Without a date, updated floor plans and more current state-of-the-art equipment, library library has the potential